So why LandBot? Well, LandBot has a very intuitive drag and drop kind of an interface, very easy to use. If you do not have any kind of IT or developer background, you can still create very, very powerful chatbots. On the other hand, if you are a developer, you understand things like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, JSON, uh, all of those kinds of things, you can add a lot of power to LandBot very easily. It's really a flexible tool. It offers the best of both worlds. A tool for the non-initiate, if you will, uh, the person that just wants to get up a land bot to achieve a specific goal, or a developer trying to create a whiz-bang chat bot that's going to blow your socks off. For starters, you want to set up a new account on landbot.io so that you can create your own chat bot and follow along trying out some of the techniques we're talking about in the class as we go. This is a free account, but with it you can actually develop and deploy a real chat bot that you can be using in production. Obviously, there are some restrictions, which is normal whenever you're using free software, but that's the easiest thing to do. Just log in to landbot.io, decide what kind of an account you would like to create, how you, how you like to log in, and you're all set to go. Let's take a bird's eye view of the LandBot platform. First, I'm going to log into my LandBot account. What you see here when you log in is the main dashboard with a list of all of the chatbots that I've created in the past. I'm going to show you a lot more of this dashboard as we uh, go through the course. You'll get a lot more detail on that. At the bottom left of the screen is a very important resource, the Help section. It's got quite a few helpful videos, articles, and a great knowledge base there. In that section, you can also connect with the LandBot community. And I've had great experience working with the LandBot community. They've solved a lot of problems for me. And I have also, of course, contributed to helping other people along as well. Let's show you first how easy and simple it is to build a chatbot in LandBot. Start by clicking on Build a Chatbot. The first choice you have to make is what type of a bot are you going to be using, meaning what channel are you targeting? Sitting on the right, you can choose an API channel. These are chatbots for developers. Like I said before, LandBot is great for non-technical as well as technical folks. But this type of bot, don't do that unless you know what you're doing. If you are a developer, then go for it. The next type of bot is a Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp bot. Anyone can create simple chatbots here. And if you need more functionality, there are developer extensions available, as we'll show you later on. The last choice is the website bot. That can be either a conversational user interface or chatbot as you'll see later. And we're going to start with this one. First thing you're going to see is the template selection for uh, LandBot. If your chatbot is addressing a very normal standard business need, templates are a great way to save some time. There are a lot of different types of chatbot templates available. They've really put a lot of work into creating these templates, so I highly recommend them. You can use things like product launch to uh, webinar acquisition, basic lead, generation, and so on. On the left panel, you can uh, select the bot templates from a specific category like customer support, lead generation, surveys, questionnaires, products, or others. There's another way to filter the templates, and that's by type of chatbot or platform you're going to be working on. For example, here are some webbot templates. Right now, we still have our filter set to others, so let's set it to all. These are web templates for all bot categories. Next, we have WhatsApp bots. WhatsApp messengers are really big in Europe, but they're on their way of conquering the U.S. markets as well. The third tab are Facebook Messenger chatbots, which are in very high demand right now. So what do these templates look like? Well, let's go back to customer support and select the FAQ template. That's a very widely used template because you can just replace the content of the chatbot and your FAQ chatbot's done. It starts off with a three button choice. And since this template was written for Top One Burger, a fast food restaurant, the first thing the chatbot asks is what topics are you interested in? It gives you three choices, general info, locations, and menu. If you select the general info option, you're presented with some text and another choice back to menu. Don't worry about all the other boxes. I'll explain everything step by step in later lessons. So templates are great. They can save you a ton of time, and you can deploy a chatbot in a heartbeat. But a lot of times, it's more work to modify the template than create a new bot. So let's see how creating a bot from scratch works. 
Here we are back at our welcome box, and we know that when the Hi button is pressed, the bot's supposed to ask for your name. Grab this green dot from the button labeled Hi and drag it out to the right to create a new block. Blocks are the main building units that LandBot works with. Oh, by the way, there are a ton of different types of blocks like simple text, media, buttons, questions, conditions, variables, and a lot, lot more. In this case, we want a question that asks for the user's name. A name is a special block in LandBot because it has built-in functionality that allows the user to type an answer, and at the same time, the bot remembers the answer in the form of a variable. Later in the conversation, you can use this variable to address the user by name. Next, the bot wants the email address of the visitor, so let's throw that in there. And in this case, because again, the email is a special type of an input, LandBot is going to remember the information and save it in a variable. It will also confirm that the email is well formulated. Obviously, it's not going to confirm that you have an actual good email, but it will at least be in the proper structure. So grab the green dot from the email box now, because we're going to send the visitor a Giphy. So we select Send a Message. That's the commonly used box. And anytime you want to send text, image, video, or anything, you can use this block. Since we want to send a Giphy, fortunately, LandBot allows us to search and embed the Giphy of our choice. But if Giphy's aren't your thing, you can upload your own files, enter a URL where media is located, or even link to a YouTube video. Now we want to move into designing the looks of your bot so you can make it look the way you want it. Click on the Design tab. You can design your chat bot so it looks exactly the way you want it to. LandBot offers the most design options I've seen in any of the chatbot platforms out there. If you don't like designing, just choose a design template. Might be okay, but yeah, it's just like with the bot template. For me, they're never enough. You can even add your logo, which is important for branding. If you're like me and design templates just don't cut it, the next three choices are absolutely critical. The first one allows you to change colors and backgrounds. You can use gradients, videos, or even images as your main background for the chatbot. You can also change the header, the chat bubbles, and the forms. In the next tab, pick the font face that you like, as well as the font size. Make sure that your chatbot can be read on the device it's going to be displayed on. And for anybody that knows HTML and CSS, you can make this bot come alive by adding custom CSS as well as custom scripts using JavaScript. So that was the design section. So onward and upward to bigger and better things. Next tab is Settings. Settings allows you to control the chatbot behavior. We'll give you a lot more about that in later lessons, but not right now. You can also add SEO and tracking as well as hidden fields, which we'll also address in later lessons when we talk about variables. When your bot's done and you're ready to share it with the world, head for the Share tab. This is where you can get the code or the link to publish your bot to a specific social media channel or to your website. You can choose between three types of integration. First off, full page. You can use this format if you want the bot to be your website. Actually, it's going to fill the entire web page. Copy and paste the code to create an HTML file with the basics of a web page. Pop-up is currently the most commonly used publishing format. And Baxby, by the way, is a pop-up chatbot that pops up on every page on the Business Analysis Experts website. Again, here's the code that you would add to the body segment of your website, or if you don't know how to do that, find a developer that does. Finally, embed. If you want the chatbot to be embedded in a web page, like in this example, which we're going to be using for the exercises, the code you see here goes into the body section. And last but not least, you do still have the live chat option. If you want to keep your bot alive and be able to modify it in the future, you need to be able to analyze its usage. Otherwise, it would be a pretty poor bot. Chatbots evolve. They have to grow with new knowledge that you gain by observing how people interact with your bot. And LandBot has a great tool for that. That's the Analyze tab. Here you can observe how many conversations the bot had, and how many leads were generated, how many conversations were finished, and so on. You even get individual flow analytics. How many people took a certain path in your bot? That gives you a phenomenal idea about where to put the effort into improving the bot. If only three visitors followed a certain path and thousands of visitors followed another, it's probably a good idea to expand the heavily used flow. So that was the first look at LandBot. Now there are many, many more things that a LandBot uh, chatbot can do, 
And some of these we're going to talk about in this class, others you're going to investigate on your own. In the remaining lessons, we're going to illustrate how we developed Baxby. For that, we're going to use the decision tree that we created earlier. We're also going to look at the Landbot features that Baxby doesn't use, so you have a good idea as to what the real power of Landbot is.